This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Working Together on Think Tech Hawaii, where we discuss the impact of change on workers, employers, and the economy. I'm your host, Cheryl Crozier Garcia, inviting you to join in the conversation. Please call us at area code 808 374 2014 or tweet us at thinktechhi. Do you remember when you became an adult? That may have been the day you graduated from high school or college, or the day you enlisted in the military, or the day you earned your driver's license. No matter the event, you had a feeling that life would never be the same again. Just as we had to embrace change, Today's university graduates are also preparing to embark on the adventure we call life. Joining me today to discuss how she is preparing for adulting is Nina Ullman. Nina's graduating in May with a master's degree in human resource management from Hawaii Pacific University. Today, she's got some advice for her peers who are getting ready to go out in the world and conquer it. Welcome, Nina. Aloha. Thank you for having me. It's my pleasure. Now, you came to Hawaii from Norway. That's right, yeah. To, to pursue your graduate degree. Why Norway, or uh, why Hawaii and not somewhere else? So I took a um, uh, semester abroad through my undergrad as in hotel management and mm -hmm. I went here and I just fell in love with the culture, with how people are with each other. Also the school system is very different from Norway and I just, I wanted to come back. Mm -hmm. So that's why I chose Hawaii for my master's degree. Mm -hmm. how, is, how is the educational system different from Norway and Hawaii? So the most important thing, what I like the most about Hawaii is that, you know, in Norway you have three courses, like here, or five, it depends, but then you have one big exam in the end, and that's it, and that's that's all that your grade will count for, is what you get on that exam. Hmm. Whilst here, you have, you know, continuously exams, and quizzes, and presentations, and I just feel like the opportunity for you to grow, and become better, and learn from your mistakes is, is greater and bigger here, and it's also, for me, it's been easier, you know, to achieve um, the GPA that I want and achieve the results in school. So mm -hmm. that's mainly why. That's nice. So um, continuous incremental improvement is, right. is probably the most attractive aspect right. of education here in the U.S. Right. Uh, what are some of the other reasons that brought you to Hawaii? The sunshine, of course, and <laughs> <laughs> the nice weather. It's just the way people are here, they're so friendly, they're so open-minded. Um, you can really just be creative and I don't know, for me it's just, I really love the culture that's here and the people I've met and yeah, I do not regret it for one second coming here, so. Well, I'm glad to hear it. Yeah. Now, do you, do you plan to stay uh, in Hawaii if, if you can? Definitely, if I can. Um, I mean, I'm allowed to stay for a year after at least, so I'm now in the process of searching for a job, so if I get a job, of course, like, I would I would love to stay forever if I could, so, mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. I see a future here, definitely. Good. Now, you're looking for a job, and right. that means that you are creating for yourself uh, an employee brand. Right. What does your brand look like? So, I've thought about, you know, Especially for international students, it's essential to create a personal brand when you're going into the search process because there's a lot of Americans applying here too and you really have to have the little extra. Uh, for me, I am advertising that, you know, I'm motivated. I have a very strong work. I'm willing to learn. I'm eager. And um, mainly when I started, like, building my own brand, um, you kind of have to set your objectives, like, what do you want people to think of 
when they go into your, uh, as an example, LinkedIn profile, mm -hmm. what, what impression do you want them to sit with after they've been there? Mm -hmm. And then you have to, you know, you have to figure out your um, areas of expertise and use these areas as, uh, of expertise and advertise them. Um, if you use LinkedIn, you know, you can really, there's a section where you can add all your skills, you know, just promote whatever you're good for. Um, for me, yeah, like customer service is something I've done my whole life, you know, HR, communication, especially that I speak a lot of different languages. I've been a lot of other, all over the world, you know. These are all skills that I promote, that I'm hardworking, have a strong work ethic. Um, and definitely important to create your own, like, uh, positioning statement. Mm -hmm. uh, I believe even if it's your resume or if it's in your um, LinkedIn account, this is the first thing um, an employer or a recruiter will see. So this really has to reflect who you are, what you're good for, and what you can give to, a, to an organization. Mm -hmm. um, use LinkedIn as, you know, as a tool to connect with people, to get a broader um, connection field. Um, you can follow organizations that you're interested in, see what they're doing, how, what they're liking, you know, get insider information. And also, you know, you can share, uh, if there's an article you find interesting, you can share that article. Um, and then when a recruiter goes into your profile, they can see what you're interested in. And if that matches their interest, that's only a bonus, you know. But make sure that it's professional. Make sure that you think about what you put out there. Um, also, your profile photo or picture that it shows the best side of you, the most professional, you know. It, that's, yeah, definitely. I'm, I'm glad you brought up the idea of photos yeah. in social media yeah. because um, there have been cases where people have ruined their own opportunities by having the wrong kinds of things on yeah. social media. Right. So as you were preparing your uh, employee brand, did you remove photos or, or do, do other things like that that would really uh, help to sell your best side? Definitely. Um, I went through all my social media and removed those photos. I mean, there wasn't really a lot to remove, but still, you know, you don't want to have only party photos or you want to show that you're a professional. And of course, have your profile picture is something that really reflects you from a nice or from a professional level and not only on, on your private matter, you know. So I definitely went through it and cleaned out what I thought would be best to leave out of my profile. So I think it's important to just use time uh, and effort and go through all your portals and make sure that it looks professional and that it will attract the attention from employers and recruiters and yeah. Mm -hmm. That's good. Yeah. Now, what about um, issues like work product? Now, I know that uh, because I've had you in class, you're a dynamite writer. Uh, you present yourself on paper extremely well. Do yeah. you have any writing samples on your um, social media or within your employee brand that uh, a prospective employer could look at? Oh, definitely on my LinkedIn, you know, I have, it's basically my resume, mm -hmm. which is on my LinkedIn. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, when I first came through the U to the U.S., I had my resume with me from Norway, which um, I thought, oh, that I can use that because the only thing I have to add is my master's degree. And I went to an advisor and she said, you know, um, you have to make sure that you follow the American standards mm -hmm. because the standards for a resume is different here. So I had to use a lot of time just changing the way my resume was set to actually make it fit for what um, employees want from your resume here. Mm -hmm. um, so especially on LinkedIn and professional portals, I write what I'm good for. I write my skills, what I've done in every job, uh, what I've accomplished so far. So yeah. Mm -hmm. What about the other social media uh, platforms? Are you on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, all of those things? Yeah, I am on uh, on both Instagram and on um, on Facebook. Um, but my profiles there are close to friends, and uh, so I haven't really 
my most, the most effort I've put into such as Glassdoor or LinkedIn to, um, to present for those who actually go out to the employer. I have on my, my private accounts, I have more just worked on with deleting photos or if there was anything that I would feel that was inappropriate, I would take that away, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that can, that can be a problem. Yeah. <laughs> I remember uh, when I was doing corporate HR, I was uh, conducting a search and the uh, potential employee actually gave us permission to look at her Facebook page. Yeah. And so we did. And then we decided that maybe this young woman would not be a good fit right. for our company. And I know that there are young people out there who say, I should be able to do whatever I want in my personal time. Right. It's my private time. If I want to party with my friends or, uh, you know, uh, chug a lug a beer or whatever, I should be able to do all of that. Yeah. Um, and I don't disagree with that, but that's not something I think that we want employers to see. Exactly. So, um, so for those of you out there who are thinking about putting up that picture of yourself uh, hanging five at the at the local uh, beach, but that might be okay. But if you're wearing your cap and gown at the time, maybe it's not so okay. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. So, uh, how do you find uh, life in Norway, say, different from life in Hawaii? Because from my experience, having worked with many, many, many Norwegian students across the years, the way you describe Hawaii people, I could use those exact adjectives with people from Norway. Friendly, open, honest, fun-loving, um, all of those things. Yeah. What is it about Hawaii, though, apart from the weather, that, that makes it different and that, and that calls to you and who you are as uh, maybe as the person you want to be? Well, I don't really, I don't have anything negative about Norway. Like, my country, it's beautiful. The people are amazing. Um, but you have, like you said, you have the same thing here. Um, you have, people are nice, people are warm. Um, the only thing is, I feel people here maybe on the more open side, you know, they will see you on the other side of the street and like scream at you and be like, hey, Nina, what's up? And you met them <laughs> once before, you know, no mm -hmm. one in Norway would do that, you know, or on the bus, they will sit next to you and start talking about their family. And it's just, I feel like people here want to help you, especially also in a professional way. Um, in school, you know, I can go talk to my advisor. I can go talk to a friend and he tries to refer me to a company, to an organization. People are not holding on to what they got. They try to share it with you. They try to help you go up and get better and uh, develop as a professional. So, Well, that's good to know. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And we are going to take a quick break, but we will be back in 60 seconds. And then you're going to tell us more about what you love about Hawaii. Okay. So we will be back in just a minute. This is Working Together on Think Tech Hawaii. This is Think Tech Hawaii, raising public awareness. I just walked by and I said, what's happening, guys? They told me they were making music. My name is Howard Wig. I am the proud host of Code Green, a program on Think Tech Hawaii. We show at 3 o'clock in the afternoon every other Monday. My guests are specialists 
both from here and the mainland on energy efficiency, which means you do more for less electricity and you're generally safer and more comfortable while you're keeping dollars in your pocket. Welcome back to Working Together on Think Tech Hawaii. I'm Cheryl Crozier Garcia, and we are talking today with Nina Ullman, a soon to be graduate of the master's program in HR at Hawaii Pacific University. Nina is an international student from Norway, and she has some good advice for other international students who are hoping to spend their one year of occupational professional training here in Hawaii. So Nina, how is that process different than it would be for a U.S. citizen? Um, I think there's a lot of things you need to think of as an international student and job seeker um, because obviously you don't have the same visa or um, green card as people that are from here and live here. So. First of all, you know, you need, to, um, you need to learn the rules of your visa. You need to figure out what can I do with the visa I have. So most of us that are students, you know, we have a student visa and we are not allowed to work while on a student visa outside of school. Uh, you can apply for the OPT, uh, even an extension of this, but just make sure you know what, what it covers and who you can apply for. And I would definitely, you know, build myself a list of companies that I'm uh, interested in. Uh, and go into you go, go into myvisajobs.com and you can actually put in the name of the company you're interested in and it will tell you if they do sponsorship, which visa they cover um, and it's really a useful tool from people uh, that are not from here that are seeking a job. Um, in addition to this, you know, build up your LinkedIn profile like we talked before. Uh, you can even put up alerts on your LinkedIn profile so when you put in your skills on LinkedIn um, and it matches with the job description, you get notified that there's a job available that matches your skills. Um, hang out with Americans, you know, learn more about their culture. Um, it's easy for, there's so many Norwegian, Swedish, Danish people uh, at the universities here. So it's easy for us to tend to hang out with those who are from here, from your same country or same area. But I've really focused on, you know, being with people from here, even learning their humor, their way of behaving, their way of talking to make you more confident when you talk to um, an employer or, or a recruiter later. And yeah, like I said, build, build up your resume, make sure it's after American standards. Um, talk to a professional, uh, you know, find someone that's within your field that can give you advice or um, maybe if you're interested in an organization find someone from that organization, from that company, get some insider information, you know, bringing that to an interview is definitely a plus for you as an international. Mm -hmm. And practice, practice your interview, you know, it's something else when you're sitting at home and knowing the answers, but when someone puts you on the spot and actually asks you, you might just not know the answers anymore. So it's definitely important. And even when you have friends from here, you know, tell them about your career interest let them know what you're good for so they can refer you, which mm -hmm. is good, yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, you bring up a couple of good points. Um, the first point is uh, expanding your circle of friends to right. include people from all over the world right. as much as you can. Um, I remember saying to a group one time that the only truly integrated group of students at HPU were the smokers yeah. <laughs> because they all had to share the ashtrays. Right. And, and so they'd gather around and, and then at that point everybody had to speak English because there were many, many different languages spoken. Right. Um, the other issue that I think you bring up that has tremendous merit is the idea of trying to find a champion or a sponsor inside either the profession that you're interested in or inside one of the companies that you may be interested in. And straight up, don't be afraid right. to walk in and say, what does the ideal candidate look like in your eyes? Right. Because that's what I want to be. Exactly, yeah. Yeah. That's true. 
I feel like um, as a student, you also, or as a job seeker, you know, you have to know what am I looking for in an employer, you know, because in one way, you're giving them a lot of you. You're doing them a favor by, by providing your services. So you have to be critical also, not just take a job because you need it, you know, make sure, as for me, I really, I think about the values for an organization. Like for me, I value um, honesty and integrity, you know. And these are values that are, it's important that they match mine with the organization. Or even, you know, it does the company culture fit your personality. You're gonna spend a lot of time in that, in that organization and it's important um, that it fits you. So, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah. Have you ever had a job that you hated? I have, no, I don't think I have actually. <laughs> Lucky you. Yeah. Because <laughs> I have. Yeah. And there is nothing worse. Yes. Uh, I was very, very young. I needed a job. Yeah. It was my, you know, first apartment, first all of that. And I literally cried every day on my way into work. And then wow. after work, I cried cried all the way home yeah and and I and and that was actually one of my motivators for going to college because I said to myself you know what never again yeah am I gonna I go through this yeah yeah it's really you know that's why you really have to be critical and you have to make sure that what you choose is something that that also makes you happy mm -hmm. you know I'm looking for does the organization give me the uh, opportunity to learn you know um, I'm eager to learn, I want to develop as a professional, but if you're going into a company that doesn't give you this opportunity, it's going to be hard. Mm -hmm. Or is there uh, a chance for me to grow, you know? I'm, I have a strong work ethic. I don't mind answering the phone at one in the night for a customer in need or coming to work four hours earlier than I need because I'm needed. As long as I see that what I'm doing is giving me results and I can develop within the organization mm -hmm. and also um, it's also a lot about if they set you up for success you know do they really give you training in-depth training um, do they follow up do they um, uh, do they is there open communication you know do they teach you transferable skills something that you can take with you further in your career I believe that an organization that teaches you these types of skills is something that's really good and something you should consider mm -hmm. and yeah also something that challenged me you know that gives me a challenge that I don't mind having a heavy workload I don't mind having to do um, a really hectic work environment as long as I see that it gives results you know I get motivated by that I see that I, I'm actually doing something so mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah now let me ask you this one of the things that everybody looks at as they search for that all important first job is the financial aspect. Right. Um, to what degree should new job seekers be willing to perhaps accept a lower rate of pay um, and then view that as a way to pay tuition in learning those parts of the job that maybe university didn't teach you? That's a good point. I think especially for international students, um, we're not the first one to get chosen in the line, you know, because we're not from here. They actually have to see a reason for investing in us for a year or or lease or, you know, so it's important to, if you see that this company can actually develop me as a professional, it might weigh up for a little less pay, um, especially for me right now, I'm more interested in growing as a professional, gaining experience, meeting new people, you know, get developing a professional network. So I would say that a good payment is something you can get later on in life. Um, right now, especially for me, it's more about the experience, getting the foot within the door, you know, so mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Which would you rather have? A job that pays well or a job that is fun to do, or a job that will teach you something? Right now, definitely the job that will teach me something. Okay. Yeah, because I'm at that 
stage in my life. I just I'm gonna graduate this May, you know. Well, maybe not. No, <laughs> yeah, maybe. But I'm um, yeah, I'm fresh out of you know university, and for me, I'm just so eager to learn new things and develop. So the last one definitely for me at this point. Um, later on, you know, also the others will be an important factor, like having fun of at least having feeling comfortable with the people you work with, you know, and, and being able to pay for housing and whatever it costs to live here. It's, yeah. Yeah. Is there anything about jobs in particular that you would try to avoid? Specific companies or specific attitudes, atmosphere? Um, I don't have a specific company that I can mention but I I know that I would not want to work with a really closed mind organization where there's no room for innovating where there's close communication you know strong hierarchies where you can't really reach out to anyone except those on your level mm -hmm. um, you know I, I value the opportunity to actually talk to someone who's been in this area and worked in this field for a long time because from them those are the people you can learn from, you know? And mm -hmm. I really think that um, human resource management is essential in today's um, work field. Um, I feel like human resources are the backbone of the organization. And if you find the right people at the right place at the right time, you know, the organization can really succeed. So I feel when you're working in that field, you need to be able to work in an open-minded organization someone who lets you create and innovate and also where you can communicate and work together in teams. I think that's really essential, yeah. I agree with you, Yeah. 100%. <laughs> Thank you. You're hired. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> no. um, our time is rapidly coming to a close, and I'm sorry for yeah, that me too. because I love talking to <laughs> you. Um, so thank you for joining us, and I know that you are going to change the world. Oh, wow. You really Thank are. You, you know, uh, change is a never ending phenomenon. People come and go, technologies become obsolete, and jobs that didn't exist five years ago are now the hot employment prospects. It seems the only thing we can't change is change itself. Today's generation of young people are coming of age in one of the most exciting times in human history. Almost anything is possible, from interplanetary travel, to cures for deadly diseases, to electing a reality TV star to the presidency. As we baby boomers and Generation Xers age out of active employment, we must learn to depend upon the next generation to pick up where we left off, learn from our mistakes, and make the world a better, kinder, more gentle place. That's all for today on Working Together on Think Tech Hawaii. On behalf of all of the volunteer citizen journalists here at Think Tech, we'll see you in two weeks. Till then, take care. <laughs>